Hi coders, I'm Matt Landers with Covalence and in this lecture we're going to talk about how to use TypeScript with events. So like if we're going to type into an input box or select a checkbox or something like that, uh, how do we handle those events and use TypeScript to get typings at the same time? So let's go ahead and dive in and see how we might do that. So we've got our project up here from some of the previous lectures that I'll just show you. We have our list of friends and we click one. We got the routing in there and everything from previous uh, lectures that you can go watch. Uh, but what we want to do here is add a text box that lets you update the name uh, on this detail page. So let's get started on that. So if we go to the detail component, the first thing that we're going to need to do is add you know, an input box. So let's go ahead and just add a section here so we can wrap our header. All right. And then we just want an input box. So I'm going to make use bootstrap, make it look kind of good. <clears throat> Create a label. Um, uh, for name. Uh, update name. And we'll put an input. Uh, make it for control class and that should be good and we want to set the default value to be whatever was passed in so we can just go ahead and set that to the state since we set that up there um, and then whenever something changes here we want to update the name so this should change what's actually on the screen showing for the name so we want to do on change and we'll set that to a function that we'll create on the class called this dot update name. All right, so it doesn't exist yet, but let's do this. I'm going to do it where it breaks first and what you might automatically try to do. So you might say uh, update name and then pass in the value. So here what you need to know is that all of the uh, React functions like on change. Um, will have their own typing. So I can say react.change event and then I need to tell it what element that is changing. So it's an HTML input element. And now what happens in here when I use E, I can see everything that's on that, what's gonna be passed in for me. And I know that target.value is the uh, value of what's in the text box. So what I can do is say this.setState Put name and we're good right this should work everything compiles everything looks fine but let's go ahead and run it and see what actually happens we come back over here we run it and when we type we see that we get an error uh, it cannot read property set state of undefined so what's happening is that it's getting its own context because of the way that we have it set up here and we haven't bound it to anything so we could do something like dot bind this and that should work. Let's see if that works. Back over here, give it a second. And now it's working. So everything's fine here, but you don't really want to have to do this dot bind. It's kind of ugly in your code. So what I would say that you do is you can change the way that you declare this update name. So what we can say is update name equals um, this this function. And what the immediate or this uh, you know lambda function or anonymous function or whatever. Whenever you declare it like this, TypeScript automatically binds this to the function. So you can't overwrite it. So this makes it a nice clean way for us to make sure that we have the right context here. So now when I save this and go run it, uh, we'll see that it works just fine. So there we go. All right, so that's how you do change events in um, with TypeScript and React. And there's other ones like the select box, check box, radio box, but they all work the same way. You just got to find their event in the typings and make sure that you declare it on whatever's going to be passed in. And you can usually find that here. So if you hover over, you'll see what's going to happen. So on change event, react dot change event HTML element. So you don't have to guess, it's there for you. Uh, you just know you need to create a function that accepts those arguments. All right. So that is it for this. We could also, show, I guess, one last thing, one last thing. So we could also do this inline, and I just want to show you what that would look like. So I'll take this out. Uh, and if we didn't want to create a whole function for it, like this one, it's kind of 
unnecessary because we're only using it on one at one place. We actually could do it right here as well. Uh, we'll say HTML input. And I don't even need that. We can just do that right there. And we should be good to go. So let me save that, make sure it compiled. It goes. We run it. And we're still working and good to go. So there's a couple of different options how you can do that. Uh, if you're only going to have one, this might make sense. But if you're going to have a bunch of input boxes, you might want to have a chain, one change event that can know what um, what's actually changing. Uh, so you don't have to repeat that code everywhere. All right, so that's it for this lecture. You should have a pretty good understanding now through the lectures that you've seen of how to use TypeScript with React. That should give you a fundamental knowledge and allow you to start building some applications. As your applications get a little more complex, you might run into some you know, little tricky things that you have to do, but uh, you should be able to figure them out now that you kind of see the pattern that we're using with React and TypeScript. So go out there, code some apps, and I look forward to seeing them. So happy coding.